Hey, this is Diane from Teach Pre-K, and if you've ever wanted a great way to run your day in preschool, this video is for you. I hope you enjoy it, and keep watching. Okay, so today I'm gonna take you through my day and my little routine that I go through with my kids. I'm here in my home office. I've been homesick for a couple of days, so I'm recuperating, and I wanna get this video done. I wanted to do it in my classroom, but I'm gonna do it here and then maybe do a follow-up in my classroom. So every day is gonna start with a good routine that the kids have an expectation of the same thing happening every single day. So what I have in place and what you might wanna think about is I always greet them at the door. I am the first face that they see. I give them the, their hellos, they put their water bottle in a tray, I give them a squirt of hand sanitizer, we do a little hug, I ask them you know, how their weekend was, whatever. Um, in my school, our hooks for backpacks and coats are outside the door, so they get that done before they see me. So if that's not your case, then you will greet them at the door and just say, okay, find your hook, put your backpack, lunchbox, coat, whatever on your hook, cubby, whatever, and then go find something to do. So a lot of teachers, the first thing they have them do is a question of the day, which is a way of taking role. Um, they'll have maybe their name on a card um, and a little question with a simple yes, no. I don't do that. Um, I just have their names on a little card with a picture of them so that they see their face and start to recognize their name. They put it in a pocket chart that I have on the wall right next to the table where those name cards are. That's the first thing they do. So their coats and backpacks are hung up. They've been greeted at the door. They get their little hug, whatever they need. We make a connection first thing. Um, some of them need to sit on my lap for a while, that's fine too. Then they know what to do next. They go find their name, they put it in the pocket chart. Then have something for them to do. That could be your teacher's aid on the rug with a puzzle. If your kids mostly come in all at once and you start your day right off the bat. Um, that could be singing songs at the rug, maybe an informal story time. Maybe you open one or two of your centers. What I like to do is I have three main tables in my classroom and on each of those tables is a different type of toy. One table will always have some kind of building toy or fine motorish kind of toy. So that's always there. The other table will have some kind of imaginary play where I might put out cars one day. I have a cute little fairy set I put out, maybe Fisher Price doll houses, something for them to do more imaginary play. And then I always have some kind of artsy, craftsy, Play-Doh thing going on. So one day it's Play-Doh, the next day it's coloring with markers, maybe we'll do watercolors, maybe it will be colored pencils, hole punchies, something that's more crafty and also working fine motor. So I'll have three things out for them to do for an allotted amount of time. That gets them in the room, socializing with each other, getting used to being in the room again, getting used to being around with each other, starting the day off practicing, sharing, how to use materials. It's just kind of like a mini center time. In fact, at my school, we call it mini centers. We don't let them go to our free centers that we do during center time, like dramatic play or the block table, but we have kind of mini versions of those around the room for them to do some exploring. Like the little artsy craftsy table, sometimes I'll have, uh, besides Play-Doh, other sensory items for them to play with. So just something for them to kind of get acquainted with and just, you know, get back into the feel of being with each other and being a class and being in the building. And this is our time where we can go around and play with the kids and talk with them a lot. Some of them just want to read a book in our lap, whatever they need to do. Um, after that, we'll have our first transition, which is cleaning up that mini center time. So that transition is pretty easy. We always give a one minute warning. So we'll all be playing and socializing. Someone will be my light helper. They'll flick the lights off and say one more minute. Sometimes the one more minute is a lot more than one minute. I kind of get the feel of how the kids are doing that day. 
Um, and then I'll have that same light helper turn the lights off and say it's time to clean up. So we'll clean up. If we have a lot of small pieces, I have four little buckets I bring out that I call my floor buckets and the kids just think it's the coolest thing if they get to have a floor bucket. It just is a way of facilitating cleanup. But find a way to make that transition easier and more fun. Um, as the years go on, you'll notice more and more kids won't clean up. So I have started the past couple of weeks playing the Mission Impossible song. And it's got this da, 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 da. And it can make them get a little crazy, but I only play one little verse of it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, we have to get it done before this song ends. So I'll usually wait halfway through cleanup time and do that song. You might do the Barney cleanup cleanup song or have another cleanup song of your own, but that's a really good way to get them a little bit more motivated and make cleanup time more fun. After that, I sing a song to get us to the rug. And I usually just sing, put your pockets on the rug, on the rug, clap, clap. Put your pockets on the rug, on the rug. So we'll do that every single day. They know that that is how we get back to the rug. So that just is a good trigger. They know it, they sing with me sometimes. We get back to the rug. We've well established crisscross applesauce. Hands in your lap, get ready for your teacher to tell you what comes next. Then I'll usually do some kind of welcome song or there'll be a song that we really like. One song we really love is um, Elizabeth Mitchell, Peace Like a River. They love it. We have actions for it, Peace Like a River. And they just, it's a sweet, calm song. Another great way to kind of get your class engaged and excited about circle time is to sing a song with their names in it. Um, sometimes you can just do like a sitting song like, like, I like the way that Johnny's sitting. I like the way that Mary's sitting. I like the way that Lulu's sitting. Thank you very much. And you go through until you say everyone's name or you'll sit in a circle and do, um, I, gosh, how did that one? I have a jump, jump song. I have a class, wait, and I have a class and in this class there is a girl her name I don't know goes with bingo sorry about that guys I should probably edit that out but after that um, we'll do circle time and circle time has a routine as well so the kids know what to expect I will do a thing I call name of the day which is a good um, name activity good literacy activity uh, we go over letters stuff like that uh, I do number of the day we will introduce our letter of the week um, sing happy birthday if there's a birthday. Kids get to choose a little prize from our, our birthday box. Um, we do either a nonfiction book that goes with our theme or we just talk about our theme like, oh, it's winter. How do we know it's winter? And kids will raise their hand and I'll say, how do you know it's winter? How do you know it's winter? Then um, we always have like... Um, some letter songs and videos. I'm lucky enough to have a smart board. So as teachers are setting up centers for center time, we'll show our letter videos, maybe a cute short theme video, um, maybe a number video. So it's maybe five to 10 minutes of videos and circle time can take up to 10 to 20 minutes, depending on what time of year it is and how much stamina the kids have built up for circle time. So I don't always do everything in circle time. Watch my circle time video. You'll kind of get a clue or how I teach numbers and how I teach letters and, and you'll get it. But, um, okay. So then after those videos, I explain centers and I go through the centers that we're going to do with teachers. That's either two or three centers that we're going to do with teachers. So we'll explain like the craft we're gonna do, the math center we're gonna do, the science center we're gonna do, the literacy center we're gonna do, and you know, we make it super fun and great. Then I always do a short recap of our free choice centers. I recap how many people can be at that centers. I have a necklace system. There's four necklaces for each free choice center. So they have to wear one. They have to put it back on the hook when they leave so that the kids who want to go to that center look on the hooks for a necklace first. Um, I go through basic rules for that center. On Monday, my explanation is always a little bit longer because my centers are new. So we go through that, and this sounds like it's taking up a lot of times, but it goes faster than you think. Because, I mean, you know 
having extra time is going to kill you, but also keeping them sitting, listening is also going to kill you. So you've really got to gauge that. So then what we do to dismiss to centers, you want to have a routine for this too, but what I usually do is if there's a teacher center that I know is like hot, they want to go to, they want to play with those letters or they want to do that craft so bad, I'll say, ooh, I was really looking and I noticed that Johnny, Susie, and Mary were great listeners. They can come over to my center and then the next teacher will do the same thing. And the rest of you, whatever kids are remaining, can pick. You might say, you know, Jack, you were listening so well today. What center do you want to go to? He might want to go to my center or my aid center, or he might want to go to dramatic play. You might do it that way, but find a way that's kind of quick. And then we do our center time. Now, I do not set a timer or have a specific length of time that kids have to be in a center and then rotate. I want the kids to move freely through my free choice centers because they're free choice centers. That's the whole point. They are making those choices. Yes, Timmy might stay at the block center the whole time and only leave for the teacher centers. Well, when he leaves, he's going to hang his necklace up. Someone else is going to get a chance and he might have to choose something else. That's kind of how I get him to make sure they rotate through all of them. But I'm not really caring about that. I know that I want them to go to all the teacher centers, but they only spend as much time as it takes them at that center. So there's nothing that's super timed and structured. How long we spend in our center time is how long it takes us to get through our teacher centers. And basically we know about what time we wanna be outside. I'm always watching the clock. Nothing is hard and fast, but I'm always watching the clock. I don't wanna to go too far over, or I don't wanna to have too much extra time, or I'm dead in the water. So if I'm doing a teacher-led center, and I know it's gonna be fast, I'll tell my aide or whoever that, hey, I'm only gonna take two people to this center because it's really fast, and I wanna make sure I pace this out okay. And also have a center that's a little bit more um, independent, so that if one teacher has to leave to take kids to the bathroom or deal with the potty accident, that's their job and somebody can kind of bop over and make sure the kids are doing well. So these are just a few things you might want to actually take notes on because they are like really important and it's taken me some experience to learn. Okay, so the same thing that I did for the mini centers, I'm going to do for my regular center time. I'm going to have my light helper give a one minute warning, which is going to be a you know, soft one minute. You know, it's never going to be under a minute, but it might be three to five minutes. Um, and then once it's time to clean up and I've queued in with all my other teachers, they're ready or we can see that it's fallen apart. We will shut down centers and that is our next transition. So we've had three transitions. We've had the mini center to rug time and then we've had rug time, rug and circle time to center time and now we're gonna clean up centers and go back to gathering on the rug. So again, have a routine for this. Tell the kids, stop where you are, clean up at your center, and then go help a friend. I always have a teacher helper and like a table cleaner that can come help the teachers clean up their centers. So it's up to the teacher to find them, bring them over, have them help them clean up. Then we get the rest of the place cleaned up. We do put your pockets on the rug, on the rug, clap, clap song, again to get them back to the rug. We've got them back to the rug and we talk about you know, what we did during centers. Or we might read a book or we might say, what was your favorite center? And go on from there. Um, I like to, in the winter time, I like to show a video so that I can start bringing their coats into them. Because like I said, my coats are out in the hall. So it puts like this extra element of getting ready to go outside that can make it completely chaotic. One thing you never wanna do is have them all go out and get their stuff for going outside at once or all line up for outside at once. So we'll have a video on and um, two or three teachers, because sometimes I have two aides, sometimes I just have one. We are getting their coats on and helping them with their coats. First, I drop their coats by them and say, hey, if I just dropped your coat by you, start getting your coat on. Or I tap them on the shoulder because they're mesmerized to Carl's car wash or whatever we've got going on. And I'll say, okay, get your coat on. 
and we get mittens on, zipped up, ready to go. And then I start dismissing them to the line by their jobs. I'll say, okay, so-and-so is my line leader today, go line up. So-and-so is my door holder, go line up. So-and-so is my caboose, go take your place at the back. Hey, Judy, you're my center checker. Check to see if we cleaned up centers and go line up. Hey, John, you did a great job cleaning up the table. Go, you know, line up, blah, 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 until everyone's lined up. And then I, I sing a song sometimes if they're rowdy in the line. When the line is ready, we will go. It's the same as the put your pockets on the rug. Um, <clears throat> it's just a tune that cues them into they need to pay attention. So then we go outside. So that's our next transition is that lining up. I've got a song for that. I've got a procedure for that. We get outside. They already know from the get-go, from the first of the year, what our rules and expectations are for outside time. Another thing that makes outside time just a little more fun and exciting and to refresh it a little is to have some toys like in big bins out there that you only bring out sometimes. Like we bring out bouncy balls sometimes. We bring out foam balls sometimes. We bring out trucks sometimes. We bring out sidewalk chalk sometimes. We bring out shovels in the snow sometimes. I hate the shovels in the snow because they all break and it's craziness, but you know, throw those out every once in a while. Make outside time a little bit more fun. Um, and you know, you know, again, you've got to look at the clock. You've got to see how long you have outside. Then have a transition already in place, a routine for lining them up. I have a whistle. Um, my co-teacher would sing the alphabet. So when her class heard her sing the alphabet, they would line up. When my class hears the whistle, they line up. We make sure everything gets cleaned up first before I ever blow the whistle or before she ever sings the ABC song. Then we get lined up, we go inside, the kids know already, here's our routine, we hang our coats up, we come back to the rug. I stand at the door and I say, hang up your coat, go sit on the rug. If they've already hung up their coat, I say, go sit on the rug. Then for the teacher that's putting out snack, I will read a story so they have enough time to put snack out. Snack helper gets our snack out. We read a story. We I teach the Catholic school. We've got to say a prayer. We say our prayer. Then I have a hand sanitizer helper where we do, um, they line up for a hand sanitizer. You might have a sink where you have them go wash their hands before snack. I um, will always do a little thing where I'm like, if you are wearing, you know, polka dots, if you are wearing red, you know, come get a hand squirt, blah, 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 until everybody has gone to their snack spot, which they identify because it has a placemat with their name on it. And if you use water bottles, they recognize their water bottle. So they're getting that name recognition again, snack time. That was an easy transition onto the rug, out to snack. But here's a problem I had forever. Um, I have a really soft pickup time, so my pickup time is 10 minutes long. So parents can come anytime during that pickup window, and I have to get extended day kids ready to go in that pickup window. Some kids don't like the snack, they're done with snack in two seconds. And I've got 15, 20 minutes. Ah! So um, one thing that I like to do is have quiet toys out or books for um, after snack. So they know they can play with whatever I've designated as quiet toys. And this isn't very many pieces. These are things that can get cleaned up like that. And books that they can read together. A teacher can read, so one of the aides can read it while the other stuff in backpacks. Whatever you have is your routine. But they know I'm done with snack. I clean up my stuff, put my water bottle in my backpack, put my placemat on the table, and I go find a book or play with the quiet toys. Sometimes I'll mix it up and I'll put on like a video that I know they like, like Carl's Car Wash, Peppa Pig, or we'll play a smart board game. And I have tons of smart board games on Boom Learning that I've already made. So I've got those queued up, ready to go. And we play smart board games while the aide waits for their parents to come get them. And we have a nice, quiet, calm dismissal. So that last transition, I want to be the most calm of the day. Every child gets said goodbye to. We look them in the eyes. I had fun with you today. You know, we tell their parents they did a great job today. We get our extended day kids ready once they are done. And the day has gone smoothly. My two and a half to three hours, 
are finished without a hitch. So that is what I do. If you have any things that you do, please leave a comment. Um, if you want to know like where I get some songs that I play or what my quiet toys might be, like I use these little, um, they're timers and um, they mix colors as you turn them upside down. They're kind of a little meditative little color mixing toy. Um, the kids really like those, but they know they have to be quiet. They have to be on the rug. They have to share. Um, I might put out some really simple uh, puzzles or um, just, you know, fun manipulatives or quiet little action figure wooden people or something for them to play with too. So anyway, that's how my day goes. I have two half days that go exactly like that every single day. The kids know they're going to go like that every single day. Um, the days where we have parties, fire drills, you know, we'll have maybe a special, we have Spanish in library. It kind of throws it off a little bit, but we try to fit it in as seamlessly as we can so that things aren't too disruptive. Kids thrive on routine. If you have more routine, you're going to have less behavior problems and just a better day. And you know what to expect. Your kids know what to expect. The parents know what to expect. And more learning happens, more fun happens, more creativity happens, and what could be better than that? <laughs>